So now that we've wired up our potentiometer to, to plus 5 volts and ground, we can now get on with wiring up our chip. Now this is just a data sheet. Data sheets are really useful. They just tell you all of the information you need to know about your any device that you're using. In our case, it will be our PCF8591. But you could easily use a data sheet to have a look at so the information that you might need for, say, a transistor or a buzzer or some, something like that. They can look quite complicated and they're pretty long. But overall, they're a really good, useful thing to have. The link for this data sheet will be in the description below. So, anyway, now, pin 1, which is analog in 0, this will have to be wired up to the wiper of our pot. By pot, I mean potentiometer, just short. And wiper, I mean the middle one, or the one that's separate from the other two. Normally, they're quite recognisable. I didn't mention before that my pot is 10 kilo ohm. I've only ever tried it with a, this program with a 10 kilo ohm pot, so it might change depending on the type of potentiometer you have. So, just wire it up with a normal jumper wire. Now, as I said before, you can have up to four analog inputs wired up. So, you could have four potentiometers, four light dependent re resistors, loads of things. That's why this chip's really good. But if you're not using them, make sure that these all go to ground, all of these three. Now, these is the hard this is the hardware address. This is just a key telling you what each of them do. Now, five, six, and seven, the hardware addresses must go to ground. And also, VSS, which is, if I find it here, is the negative supply voltage. That must go to ground as well. Now, VDD, pin 16, must go to plus 5 volts. Remember that our Raspberry Pi supply is plus 5 volts, so we're not going to have to rely on any power. Separate power like batteries. And But then the pin underneath it is an analog out. Now, it's only got one analog out. And analog outs are really useful, meaning that you could, say, tell a servo to go into this position. I, I haven't used the analog out on my chip yet, so I can't really comment on it. Now, so V ref should be wired up, again using just a normal jump wire, to plus 5 volts. Remember that, it has to go to plus 5 volts. Now, Analog ground, guess where that goes? It goes straight to ground. Pin 12, which is the external internal switch for an oscillator. If you know what an oscillator is. It's not just Google it. That must go to ground. And pin 11 can go to ground as well. And so, these pins now. These two, you'll probably recognise from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO layout. That is I2C the clock line and the data line. So pin 9 must go to, one sec, pin 9 is the data line, so it must go to pin 3 on the Raspberry Pi GPIO. This is just a GPIO layout thing. This will also be in the description below. And pin 10, which is going to be the clock, has to go to pin 5 on the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. Okay, once you've done that, that's pretty much all wired up, and I'll go back to the camera now and explain how to program your chip. So, when you finish wiring up your chip, it should look something like this. You can now understand why I didn't do it part by part, but it got far too complex. So now we're going to install all the software that we need to activate the I2C pins on the Raspberry Pi. So, start up your Raspberry Pi, log in, and then start the desktop environment with the command start x. Now, once you've done that, click on LX terminal. You should get the terminal carp. Now, we need something called I2C drivers. The basically these are just drivers that will allow us to use the I2C. Unfortunately, fortunately I mean, the Raspbian distro already have them installed. 
have their blacklisted, which means that they they don't load by default. So, so we're going to unblacklist them. So all the commands will be available in the description below. What we're going to do is sudo nano. Nano is just a really powerful text editor, and then forward slash etc mod probe dot d forward slash rasp hyphen blacklist dot c o n f and you should get something like this except you see the little hash there they probably won't be there that is what you have to add by default make sure you add the hash so it'll probably look like this so just add the hash so you'll be able to use the SBI pins as talked about earlier and most importantly the I2C pins you, pro you probably didn't get that command it's quite long but don't worry it'll be in the description below now once you've finished with that control X and then no wait control X and then it will ask you if you want to save it just press Y and then press enter there we go you have activated the I2C pins now we need to add two lines in another text file so sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash modules press enter look something like this just explaining just explaining what, what modules are loaded and what modules aren't loaded now these two things are what you're going to need they will not be there by default you need to type those in make sure you type those in SND hyphen BCM 2835 enter I2C dev didn't catch any of the commands don't worry they'll be in the description below once you've done that control X and make sure you've saved it now we need to use a software package installer that I've talked about in my other videos which is called apt-get because we're going to need to install some software this is where your Raspberry Pi needs to be connected to the internet so sudo sudo apt-get install Python, Python, and then a hyphen, SM bus. Press enter. I'll probably tell. It'll probably, I'll probably get a message telling me that I've already downloaded it and it's at this newest version. Though you, it probably won't. It will just come up with loads of lines of text. If that happens, click yes at all of the times. It prompts you for a yes, and then you have that. Then you have that downloaded. If you're not following any of the commands, again they'll be in the description below, and then type in sudo apt get install i2c tools. Again it'll probably tell me that my i2c tools is already at the newest version. So, once that's done, we can finally act, uh, write the code to access the chip. So you can close this LX terminal and you have to boot up Py Python 2.6.6 idle. Sadly Python SM bus can't be used with idle 3 so you can't use it with the latest Python. Not to worry, there's not too many differences between the old and new Python. So just wait for that to boot up. Here we go, come up into the Python shell you just do file new window or control N I will find it in my pre-made programs C 
So, here we go. Now, this is the program that they're going to be using. It's going to be quite different from our other GPIO programs because it uses the ITC pins, but I'll just walk you through it quite quickly. So, just a few comments explaining what it does. This is importing the SM bus module. You're going to need that. This is making a variable. This prints the line, read the AD and control C to stop. Set control register to read channel 0. Analog in 0, pin 1. Last reading equals minus 1. That's is a while loop. You still do this forever. Reading equals bus.read underscore byte brackets open 0 times 48 read the AD and then it will just print the AD so if the reading changes it's going to print it simple as that I don't hold any of the credit for this program most of the stuff in my tutorial has been kindly put on the forum by a forum member called Grumpy Mike can't thank him enough for his work anyway so once that's done save it and then close it and open up your good old friend LX Terminal now change the, change the directory using CD that you've saved it in directories are called directories in Linux they might be called folders in Windows but you'll learn all the Linux terminology soon enough and once you've done that do sudo python and then the name of your pro program. In my case it's called potread.py. Press enter. Now you probably see that it says read the AD, control C to stop. Now if we angle this down to have a look down here. If I get my handy screwdriver and I twist this all the way around and all the way back round we'll see on the screen that we get a variety of different values if I, there we go, I'm twisting that twisting it the other way it goes down to Two or one just depends. See if we can get it all the way up to 255. And so that's how to get an analog input. Maybe a challenge would be for you to maybe wire up a pot and some LEDs and get it to scroll through the LEDs. That's one of the first things I did. I think that'd be a really good challenge. And uh, please watch my other videos and subscribe. There will be all of the necessary links and information in the description below. Also, if you have any problems or if I, was any, if I was unclear in any part of this video, do not hesitate to comment below or email me at the raspberrypiguy at gmail.com. If you've got any questions or stuff that you'd like me to try out, again, don't hesitate to comment or email me at the raspberrypiguy at gmail.com. I strongly recommend that you go check out the forums on the Raspberry Pi website, www.raspberrypi.org. Thanks for watching, and if you if you'd like me to try anything out, please don't hesitate to call uh, to email me, not call me, because I'm always open to new ideas. Thanks and bye.